Everywhere you turn, you hear people talking about blockchain, cryptocurrency, and mass adoption. When is it going to be mass adopted? Who's going to bring mass adoption? I mean, right now, really, you see a lot of companies starting to use blockchain technology. I mean, you got IBM who's using blockchain for logistics. I think Walmart is using it for the same reason. You got certain banks that are using blockchain. And I mean, here and there, you're going to hear about companies using blockchain. But for the most part, a lot of those companies are using private blockchains. So who's going to bring mass adoption to the public blockchains? Who's going to introduce the masses to cryptocurrency? I mean, sure, a lot of people heard about it, but nobody really knows what it is. Right now, I believe that Tron has a good opportunity to be at the forefront with their BitTorrent token of bringing a portion of the masses into the crypto space. Now, let's talk about Tron a little bit. They've been getting a lot of attention in the media for like a year, maybe longer. Some good, some bad. Now, some of the good, definitely that guy, Justin Sun. He is a marketing monster. He goes out there. He keeps his community active and informed at all times. They are hype. They are like a good community, man. Seriously. When I say good community, I don't know if the people are like nice people, but I mean like they got a strong community for sure. And then there's been some FUD, mainly the accusation of plagiarizing Ethereum's white paper. I'm not here to say whether they did or they didn't, but that was like one of the big things. But it doesn't matter. Two things that nobody can say about Tron, or I guess that you have to say about Tron, right, on the other end of it, is that they have transactions. They can't say that they don't have transactions. They have two to three million transactions happening on a daily basis on Tron. They have some gambling dabs and a couple other games and stuff that are really some of the top dabs in the whole crypto space. So you just got to give it to them. They're doing it. They are doing it. So they're working on that and they're doing what they said they would and they might scale. They might go further. I don't know. The other thing that nobody can deny is that they have BitTorrent. And this BitTorrent token thing could be really big. Now, first and foremost, I want to shout out Bram Cohen because like he invented the whole BitTorrent peer-to-peer -peer sharing protocol. And he doesn't get enough. Uh, maybe he does get enough for this. I'm really into the crypto space and everybody talks about Satoshi Nakamoto. But you got this guy, Bram Cohen. He invented this thing that I've used Many of you have actually used in our everyday lives and it's really changed our lives for real. So I definitely want to salute that man. But anyway, so central servers, right? Let's talk about central servers. So for the most part, people download files from a centralized server and that is completely fine, especially like small files. It should work pretty well. But there are occasions when the server is not strong enough and more and more people start to jump on the network, it slows down and gets congested, and then eventually it could even crash. Now, I've seen this happen with buying sneakers. I've seen this happen in 2012 with Dream Chasers mixtape from Meek Mill. 200,000 plus people were downloading from that piff and it literally crashed their server. So this happens on a frequent basis. You see a lot of people using cloud and other technology so that they don't have to use, you know, their own servers, you know. So that's that. Centralized servers are not bad though, but they could have their faults. Now, torrents work differently. Torrents don't really run on a centralized server. Torrents actually take a file and split it up into many, many, many little pieces and way more pieces than I'm showing you right now. And really the first person that's downloading is pretty slow for them. On a central server, it'd be quick for them. But the interesting thing is that when somebody else joins the network, they can immediately start sharing those pieces that they've downloaded while continuing to download. And the more people that join the network, the more efficient it becomes because they have more than one person to download from. And it makes it a lot quicker and a lot more efficient. So more and more people on the network, they can share with each other. And it makes a whole decentralized peer-to-peer -peer file sharing system for everybody and makes it very efficient. You see, when people download these files and they stay on the network it's called seeding seeders that means that you're pretty much 
allowing other people to download from what you have and the same way they're allowing you to download from them. So when you download a torrent, you're downloading from all these people around the world, really, and they're all seeding. So if you leave the network, you're actually taking away from an opportunity for somebody else to download. But a lot of people do it. <laughs> Those are called leeches or leechers. A lot of people just download what they want and then they just leave. And sometimes it might not be for malicious reasons, but sometimes it's just old stuff. You know, a lot of old videos or old music, some people are looking for it and they really can't download it because there's nobody seeding that type of content on the network. So what Tron is doing is they have a BitTorrent token and they are incentivizing people to seed on the network to make downloads more efficient or just to, you know, increase download speeds. Now, honestly, I've been seeing articles about more people turning back to torrents and it don't really feel that way right now. It feels like everything is streaming. You know, we're on YouTube. I'm on YouTube, you know, Spotify and all these streaming platforms like Netflix and Hulu. But the problem is we're paying for so many subscriptions. I mean, like everywhere you turn, there's another subscription. You got Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, and now Disney is coming out. I mean, Hulu, you got to pay for it. And then you got to pay for a commercial free version. <laughs> then you got YouTube Red. I mean, there's just too many. At a certain point, people are like, look, I'm spending $60 a month on streaming services because this platform has some while this platform has another. And there's like this whole battle for who has what. Meanwhile, I could just be getting it for free. Not encouraging anybody to go out there and download any copywritten content. It's not the point here. But what I am saying is that a lot of people are turning back to torrents. See, BitTorrent has 100 million plus users. And now if 1% of their users were to use the BitTorrent token to start seeding, it would massively increase the network. <laughs> it would just increase the network in general and people who don't even use the token would benefit from it. They'd have quicker downloads because they'd have more people to download from and there'd be people that'd be making some kind of passive income. So old stuff that you couldn't find might start popping back up, man. And you're gonna maybe, hopefully, hopefully we're gonna see these streaming services. I'm not saying go download, but hopefully we can see these streaming services start you know improving their platforms because we're seeing the prices go up we just see netflix prices go up and honestly it's just becoming a lot now so i do think that there's a huge opportunity here and i mean like movies and music are not the only things that people use i mean they use it for literal like programs and big game communities uh big game platforms actually use it to up up update like patches and stuff like that so there's a lot of different use cases um i heard even like facebook uses it not you know for for like their own private content they use torrents as well so i mean there's a lot of different use cases for torrents it's not going anywhere it's been battle tested it's been used for a long time now over a decade almost two decades strong so torrents are here to stay and if it can do something with the token a cryptocurrency the blockchain tech that'll be amazing now a lot of people are kind of like speculating on how this is gonna go bram cohen even tweeted recently that he has nothing to do with BitTorrent anymore and had never had anything to do with tron or the tron foundation or justin sun but he does also clarify that you know that's since 2017 so you know, he's putting it out there now, maybe because he's building his own cryptocurrency and people are probably asking him about BitTorrent token like crazy. So he even pinned the tweet. Right. So I know there's a lot of like little FUD going around about, oh, man, you know, it's not going to work for Tron. Now, I don't know if it's going to work for Tron. Personally, I don't think any chain is ready for tens upon tens of millions of transactions. I mean, EOS is putting out tens of millions of transactions a day. But to see something scale, at, I really don't even know what level of scale here. That's that's the my real problem. I don't know what level of transactions. Hundreds of millions in a day? It's possible. If a million people are, you know, receiving tokens, sending tokens, and doing all these different things, along with the other dApps that are already on the platform. So let me know what you guys think. 
do you think that this is going to be successful? I think they have a wonderful opportunity and I hope it works. Um, but do you think that any chain is even ready for this right now? I would really like to hear what you guys got to say. I think I'm going to leave it at that. I got more videos coming, guys, so stick around. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Share it if you may. I really appreciate it. And leave some comments. Let's have a conversation. I love talking to you guys in the comments. Until next time, I'll see you later. Peace.